Welcome to lesson eight. Congratulations. Not only are you nearly halfway through this course, but did you realize that after the last lesson, you finished 1 Peter? And no, this is not about quantity, and we're not earning points with God, but you just read an entire book of the Bible. Good job! I hope you're already seeing the benefits in your own life of hydrating your soul. Well, today, we're going to do something a little different, both with our teaching time and with your hydrate time, but I want to share a little more of my own story and about why we are hydrating in 1 Peter and 2 Peter. When I was in 8th grade, it was the first week of January, and my dad came into my bedroom one night to say goodnight, and he had these papers in his hands. And he told me about how when he was in 9th grade, he read the entire Bible and he was challenging me to do the same thing. And although I was a year younger than he was, he told me how much he believed in me and that he thought I could do it. He gave me these two bookmarks. Uh, one had a plan to read the Old Testament and the other had a plan to read the New Testament. And for every day of the year, I would read a few chapters of the Old Testament in the morning and a chapter of the New Testament every night. And if I followed the schedule, then by December 31st, I could read the entire Bible. Well, since he was my dad and he wanted me to do it, I did it. It was a little tough to stay on track throughout the summer, especially with vacations, camps, and sports practices. I got off track, and well, I didn't get it done in a year. It took me a year and a few months. And since I couldn't decide what to do after that, and since I wasn't very creative, I figured I would just start over and this time try to actually read it in all 12 months. And by God's grace, I'm not trying to brag here, but by God's grace, I did. The next year, I read through the Bible again. Now at that point, I was really growing in my faith. My friends and my family were taking notice. And so for my birthday, my best friend gave me a study Bible featuring the Living Bible, which is translated the Bible in new and fresh language. Now, in another lesson, we're going to talk about different translations, so I'm not going to get into that very much right now. So I decided to read that Living Bible edition, and I have it here in my hands, on my fourth time through the Bible. Well, on this time through, I took a set of highlighters, and I highlighted every verse that really spoke to me. As you might guess, the Old Testament didn't get much color. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John featuring the teachings of Jesus, they got a lot of color. Romans, tough stuff there. Some color, but not a ton. But then, check out 1 Peter and 2 Peter. Almost every verse highlighted or underlined. There are pages full of color. I had to buy another pack of highlighters. That was almost 30 years ago, and it is so inspiring to look back and see how I was hearing from God in those formative years. And so, when people ask me where to start reading the Bible, I regularly send them to 1st and 2nd Peter, just like I'm encouraging you to do, because there is so much here to draw from. The practical wisdom and the teaching, it's so inspiring. Now, in the next lesson, I'm going to teach you another way to engage your Bible beyond picking one verse. And no, it's not to read the Bible through in one year. You might get to that eventually, but I would not recommend starting there. For now, I would rather you experience quality rather than quantity. But for today's Hydrate Time, I want to encourage you to hear from God outside 1st or 2nd Peter. So take your Bible and find Psalm 19. You can use the table of contents, or here's a trick to find the Psalms. Uh, the book of Psalms is the longest book in the Bible, and it's located at the middle of most paper Bibles. So if you look at the binding in your Bible and you open it to a random page about halfway through the Bible, chances are that you opened to the book of Psalms. Now flip these pages to find Psalm 19. That's like chapter 19. If you can, pause the video and find Psalm 19 right now. So what I want you to do 
is I want you to read and think deeply about verses 7 through 14. And today, let's just take a look at those few verses. You'll find some questions to guide you in your workbook. But to start out, take a look at verses 7 through 9. In these verses, we see a pattern as the author describes the words of God or the Bible. Okay, so verse, look at verse 7. He calls God's word the law of the Lord. And then every line after that, he uses a different word to say something about God's word. But in here, it's the law of the Lord. In verse 7, he says that the law of the Lord, that God's word, is perfect. And then... In this pattern, he describes a personal benefit that we receive when we engage in God's Word. So here in verse 7, he says, The law of the Lord, or the Bible, it refreshes the soul. Now, in just a moment, after the video is over, write in your workbook and note how this same pattern shows up in every line of verses 7 through 14, and see if you can find the pattern all the way through. Then, Respond to the rest of the reflection questions, including the questions about the remaining verses in this section. Yes, this sounds like study, thinking, and learning. But don't neglect the final question. That will make sure that you have paused to really hear from God. Enjoy this time in God's Word, and I'll see you next time for Lesson 9.